Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done a proper video for everyone, and really it's just because it's summertime, which means I'm spending a lot of time driving out on the beach, and there's only so much video that you can watch of someone driving out on the sand because it looks the same every time. Also, it just means it's hot and uncomfortable, so I try and stay inside in the air conditioning because I really don't want to stand out in my garage and sweat on camera for everybody to make fun of me later. But Mr. Skeptical did ask me a question in the comments about what's the best and worst mods for a Nissan Xterra, and I thought it was a great topic of discussion. So I'm going to do the five best mods that I have done, the five least favorite mods that I have done. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Goldilocks principle, which, as I say, something that's not enough, too much, or just right. So some of the mods where there's different gradients that you can do, and where do I think the sweet spot is. Now for the scope of this video, I'm going to be talking about things that I have direct experience with. I'm also going to be tailoring this towards kind of a middle-of-the-road Nissan Xterra user, so someone that might use four-wheel drive to go off-roading, you know, three, four, five times a year maybe, but most of the time on-road. Otherwise, it'd be very easy for me to say, hey, the best mods are to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on front bumpers, tire carriers, rock sliders, lockers in the front and back, and giant, uh, you know, tires and solid axle swaps. That's not necessarily helpful for the most people that are looking to modify a Nissan Xterra, so I'm going to go with some of the more basic mods and which ones I think are worth it. So in no particular order here, the first one on my list is going to be the 2-inch body lift. I initially didn't want to do a body lift on my truck because I thought it seemed kind of improper to just throw some plastic pucks on there that's holding your entire cab off of the frame. I ended up doing it finally because I just didn't have much else to do to my truck and I decided to just you know go for it. And I actually really liked it. From a visual standpoint, you get an even 2 inches of lift all over the truck. You don't have to worry about having too much of a rake or not being able to lift the front as much as the rear like you do with suspension lifts. There is some extra work involved with relocating things and I've got videos on all of that so I'm not going to go into details but ultimately this gives you two inches of lift and it's completely invisible from the drivability standpoint. The next one on my list is going to be reinforced steering. I'm not going to specify you know specific mods within the steering system because I have a couple different videos on steering systems but if you're going to be driving your Nissan Xterra on the road and off-road every once in a while, if you want to go off-roading on the weekend and still get to work on Monday, you need to reinforce your steering system. That's going to be the weakest link that's most likely to leave you stranded and leave you in a jam not being able to drive your truck. So some combination of heavy-duty tie rod adjusters, uh, idler arm bushings, uh, reinforced center links, and that type of stuff. Additionally, the steering system is going to hold your alignment for your tires. So especially if you're going to get bigger or more expensive tires, you need to make sure that you're holding that alignment so you can protect your investment. And I've got other videos that go into detail, so I'm not doing that here. The next mod that I recommend is a little bit more invasive as far as the amount of work that it takes to put it in, but the front locka. So the front differential is an open differential, which means that once one tire starts slipping, then you're going to get no more power to the tire that does have traction. But the front locker will lock your front left and your front right axles together, so both tires are going to be forced to be driven at all times when you're in four-wheel drive. Now since the first gen Nissan Xterra has locking hubs that will unlock at the hubs, you don't have to worry about you know, ratcheting while you're just driving in two-wheel drive or on street driving. It's completely invisible from the street perspective. And it does give you a lot of great off-road traction. So you can do some pretty advanced terrain if you really want to. But the best thing that I like about it is that you can do more moderate terrain a lot easier. So typically if you have an open differential, you might have to do what I call the bump and run to get over obstacles or to get up a rock ledge. You might have to hit it with some speed to kind of bounce your tires over it and hope that you can pull yourself up over it. That also leads to broken hubs, that also leads to broken tie rods, and that can also leave you stranded, and that's not fun. So because you can crawl up a ledge, you can hit it with a little more control, and you're not going to be putting shock loads into your steering system. Number four on my list is going to be a combination of two. And I'm just lumping them together because they kind of do the same thing. And that's going to be the stock airbox mod with an air filter. I did the AEM dry flow, and I've got a video on that as well, so I won't go into detail. But also my MagnaFlow exhaust. And when I say that they do the same thing, I mean, it's all dealing with airflow. It gives a little bit of sound. It's not really doing a whole lot performance-wise, but it does make it sound better, and I like the sound. I like the way that my MagnaFlow exhaust pairs with that stock airbox mod. So I recommend that. The airbox mod's pretty cheap and easy to do. The MagnaFlow exhaust, you know, you cost the muffler and then maybe a hundred bucks to weld up pipes. So it's uh, not terribly expensive. It's fairly accessible if you want to do something like that. But sometimes it's just fun to do a mod because it sounds cool or looks cool. And this is one of those for me. And the last thing on my list is a little bit of a curveball, but it's a good CB setup. 
Now, when you're out on the trail with other friends, you need to have good CB radio so you can contact people if you get stuck or if you get lost on the trail, you can try and contact other people that are out there. And I've had various levels of, uh, I guess, CB antennas. I actually have a cheap Walmart CB radio. It's a Cobra DX3 or something like that. It's several years old. I got it for 30 bucks maybe. But the more important thing is going to be an adjustable antenna that you can tune and then finding someone that has an SWR meter or buying one yourself so you can actually tune the antenna to your vehicle so you can increase the range. I tried little magnet mount antennas that were just universal and it never worked. It was always filled with static. I was like, what's the point of even having this CB radio here? But once I got a good fire stick with a tunable tip and had someone uh, that had an SWR meter to tune that properly. Now I can get you know more than a mile on my CB setup. I haven't directly measured it, but it makes it a lot easier to communicate. And it's not just good for off-roading too. If you happen to be going somewhere in a convoy where there's a couple exteras meeting up or something, it's fun to just pass some time on the road to talk to each other or talk to other truckers along the road. So it's definitely a good mod that you should consider.